The ZV-E10 is Sony's most affordable and best interchangeable lens camera yet, but almost everyone who reviews this camera has complained about rolling shutter and stabilization. Yet here I am walking with the ZV-E10 in my hands, and as you can see, the footage is reasonably stable. It may not be as stable as a GoPro, but this is totally workable. And in this clip right here, you can see that the rolling shutter isn't really that bad even though I'm shooting this video in 4K. So what is everyone talking about? Or more specifically, what is everyone not talking about? So the ZV-E10 is a $700 camera with a nice APS-C sensor, which means it's capable of exceptional depth of field and low light performance. It also has incredible autofocus and is capable of shooting in log and is a seriously good camera for photography. It may not have a viewfinder, but it's really nice knowing that every photo I've taken on my A6100 can be repeated on the ZV-E10. To make such a versatile camera affordable, Sony is using the same sensor it's been using for years for its A6000 series cameras. As far as I can tell, this is the same sensor that made its debut in the A6300 in 2016. And since then, rolling shutter has always been a big problem. Of course, the ZV-E10 is no different, except for the fact that Sony actually figured out a way to minimize it. Of course, the ideal solution would be for Sony to create a new sensor with a much faster readout, but as I demonstrated earlier, you can dramatically reduce rolling shutter even when shooting 4K video. To do this though, you must either turn off all forms of stabilization or use active mode, which uses that 44% crop everyone complains about in addition to any optical stabilization from the lens. The ZV-E10 has a built-in gyro that reads motion to help stabilize footage. But not only that, since Sony knows exactly how much rolling shutter its sensor produces, they seem to have created an algorithm that can compensate for it. This is a really big deal because when rolling shutter is this bad, correcting for it is almost essential to produce stabilized video, especially when we're trying to shoot handheld. This is why Catalyst browse stabilization is so much better than active stabilization on its own because active doesn't have any correction for rolling shutter. To demonstrate this, if we take this footage and try to stabilize it in Premiere Pro, the software gets confused by that rolling shutter effect that's introduced from each step. As a result, it spits out this jello-like footage when trying to stabilize it. Using Catalyst Browse though, the footage comes back pretty much perfect. To prove this, here's a 1080p shot which has no noticeable rolling shutter, and as a result, Premiere Pro has pretty much no problem stabilizing it. I knew that rolling shutter and stabilization were going to be a big problem when I bought this camera because I have an A6100. What I didn't know though was that the ZV-E10 would almost completely resolve this problem. I'm not saying that it's perfect though. For one, it's an additional step that you have to take and I understand that for some people it might be painfully slow. It takes me about 4 minutes to stabilize 1 minute of 4K video and that's using a 16 inch MacBook Pro which is a pretty powerful machine. Secondly, it doesn't seem to work with manual focus lenses such as the ultra wide and ultra affordable Rokinon 12mm. This means that the best ultra wide lenses for this camera are quite expensive such as the Sony 10-18 or the Tamron 11-20. If you're into this vlogging format, the kit lens or the Sigma 16mm is a little bit tight, but it's workable as long as you stay out of the active mode. Finally, rolling shutter is always going to be some kind of a problem, especially if you're quickly panning or filming fast moving objects in 4K. I don't know what the parameters are for correcting rolling shutter, but as you can see in this clip, there's no correction at all. But in this vlog style clip, the rolling shutter has been completely transferred from the background to me. If you need to film fast moving objects though, shooting in 1080p with a higher frame rate is probably the way to go since there's no rolling shutter problem. So in the end, like any other affordable camera, the ZV-E10 does have its flaws. Rolling shutter is pretty bad and stabilization isn't that great, that is unless you use Catalyst Browse. And I feel like very few people mention this. With Catalyst Browse, the results are truly exceptional and make me highly recommend this camera for anyone looking for one. For $700, there's really no other camera that's going to give you this level of autofocus speed, this level of depth of field, and this kind of low light performance thanks to that large APS-C sensor. 
I think having to take the time to use Catalyst Browse to stabilize your handheld footage in post is a small price to pay, especially if you're going to be spending time editing your videos and color grading your videos in post, like you may want to be if you're going to be spending money on a camera in the first place. Is that okay? And with that, thank you very much for watching.